a director of economics uh, observatory. He's with me now. We'll do first of all Europe, and then I'll sort of bring the two transatlantics together. If you look at that number, it's very similar in a sense. You can take hope from the latest ECB number, but one would be foolish to say that the battle against inflation is won. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Clearly, it's coming down a little bit, but way, way higher than we've seen for a long time. And importantly, you were talking in the previous section, I think rightly so, about the 1970s. There is this concern that because uh, workers are seeing a, a real pay terms decrease, we're seeing an increase in union activity, we're seeing increase in tensions in the workplace with people aiming to bid up their wages completely understandably. When that happens, it can be much harder to get inflation out of the system because every firm is facing a higher payroll and they're going to tend to push that back out in next year's prices. So I wouldn't read too much into this little kind of jink down that we've seen just in the latest data point. Do you believe we have much further to go in the rate hiking cycle on both sides of the Atlantic? And, you know, even once they've paused rates at these elevated levels, are they restrictive enough? I think the I think Powell sig signalled it today, right? I think the era of what has now been called jumbo rate rises, you've got them there on the screen, these, these big jumps, um, uh, is over for the moment. And that's for the simple reason, actually, that monetary policy takes quite a long time to impact the economy. So I was a, an economist at the Bank of England for a good time. And, and there in, in the UK, it's thought that it will take around 12 to 18 months, maybe even two years for some of the effects of a rate hike to affect the real economy. So you have to do this with an eye to the future and understanding how, mm. it's, how it's affecting not just demand today, but future demand. And so they need to kind of suck it and see a little bit and hold with these with these higher rates. So what I think we're going to see is what the market's expecting and what the central bankers are signaling is smaller nudges, sort of 25 basis points and less of this 50, 75 percent basis point shift that we've been seeing. Which which assumes that at some point and we're not there yet, according to what Jay Powell was saying today, at some point you have to see meaningful cuts in rates. Uh, sorry, cuts in inflation. You have to see you have to see inflation coming down in a meaningful fashion. When would you expect to see that? I think we'll see that next year, uh, midway through next year. And for the simple reason, it's always um, uh, kind of difficult to uh, to explain. Um, but I hope um, our viewers can un understand the basic intuition is of this jargon that economists talk about, which is so-called base effects. So essentially, what happens when prices go a big jump in prices, uh, let's say more or less 10% that we've seen, we get this 10% inflation rate. As long as prices don't keep going up and keep going up and keep going up, once we've got a year away from that step up in prices, we get this automatic thing called a base effect where the inflation rate will come down because it, it was more than a year ago and we only look at prices over the course uh, of a year. So we're going to see these, these big reductions, I think, in inflation midway through next year, as things like the big jumps that we saw because right. of the war uh, in Ukraine uh, and because of the global supply chain shocks, as those come out of the system, the question, that was the supply side inflation that will mm. come out. The question, and it goes back to your discussion of the Fed, is what's going on on the, the demand side and has, has central bank activity tamped down demand to quell that inflation as well. How much of a problem is it that there is still a large levels of savings from the pandemic that's making it obviously more difficult because people do still have money to spend? Certainly we see it in travel and tourism. Uh, I was at the WTTC this week. But it makes it difficult because consumers can dip into savings to continue to spend even though interest rates are higher. Uh, yes, it, it is more difficult. And that's why I think we're seeing so much um, focus and so much effort being put in. And, and really, that was the element, I, I would say, of your last segment on the Fed, of what we would call people that follow central banks would call kind of expectations management. Because what the central banks are trying to do is to explain to people that they are going to be committed 
to getting inflation down. Um, and they're going to hold steady with that. And if you can get some of that into the ether, into people's expectations, into the expectations of firms that are setting prices, then you can actually get uh, almost like a free lunch as a central banker. And this was something that they didn't have in the 1970s because expectations got out mm -hmm. of control there right. for what inflation was going to be. And that can help you bring inflation down. So that's what they're looking to do. I'm grateful for you tonight. We'll talk more about it as we, as we uh, go through the various rate cycles. I'm grateful. Thank you.